Many organizations make use of overhead or also known as pendant hoists. This versatile equipment is typically used to safely maneuver heavy loads around shops, treatment plants, pump stations, and other locations. For the purpose of this short video, we will be focusing on overhead rail mounted hoists. Of these type of hoists, some of the most common operating systems are electric, pneumatic, and hand-operated chain hoists. In addition, the most common lifting mediums used to lift the loads include wire, rope, or cable, and welded link load chain. Some of the most common loads that may require the use of these hoists may be large drums or other containers, sheet steel and iron, pipe, large pumps and motors and other heavy materials. Since the type of lifting medium is so important, let's talk about some more of the considerations. Wire rope or cable consists of a core, strands, and wires that make up a rope strand. The wire rope wraps onto grooves on the circumference of the hoist drum, transmitting power and motion to the wire rope. The most common sizes of wire rope are generally 5 16 and 3 8 of an inch or greater. The construction and tensile strength requirements of the wire rope has been engineered and determined by the hoist manufacturer. With this in mind, only wire rope with specifications as originally stated by the hoist manufacturer should be used. It is always best to have any of the lifting media such as rope, cable, or chain replaced by a factory authorized service professional. It should be noted that it is possible to damage wire rope or cable by kinking or bird caging reducing the list capabilities or creating a very real hazard while lifting. Welded link load chain consists of a series of interwoven and welded links. The links fit into the pockets of the hoist load sprocket and transmit motion to the load chain during activation. The size chain may vary from a quarter inch, five sixteenths inches or more. Welded link load chain is designed and manufactured to specific dimension and strength requirements for a specific hoist. It is critical to know that welded link load chain is not interchangeable between different manufacturers hoist and is not interchangeable with any other type of welded link lifting chain. Only welded link load chain meeting the specifications as required by the hoist manufacturer should be used. Let's take time to discuss some very important safety issues for working with pendant or overhead hoists. Failure to read and comply with safety precautions in manufacturer's manual and instructions located on the hoist is a safety violation that may result in property damage, serious injury, or death. In addition, it is a good idea to hold a safety briefing prior to using the equipment. It's much better to do so than have an accident. Personal protective equipment must be worn when operating hoists. This would include eye, head, and foot protection at a minimum in most cases. Hoist operators must inspect equipment before each use to ensure no unsafe conditions exist such as improperly operating limit switches, damaged cable, hooks, chains, or other components that may be worn or in disrepair. Under no circumstances must you ever exceed the rated load capacity of the hoist, chain, cable, slings, or other components. Also, be sure to double check end stops. End stops prevent the trolley from running off the beam. Check the condition and capacity of nylon or synthetic web slings. Capacity ratings must be legible on the manufacturer's label. The capacity of the sling being used must be adequate for the load and attachment method. Of course, replace slings immediately if excessive wear is evident. Slings, load chains, and other lifting devices must be fully and securely seated in the hook before moving a load. Remove slack from the sling, chain, or cable before lifting a load. Never lift with a kinked chain or cable that has been bird caged, kinked, or otherwise damaged. Be sure that the entire hoist system is professionally certified as required by regulation and or the manufacturer's requirements. The hoist lifting capabilities must be posted on the equipment as well as the railing or other system that holds the load. Here is a simple rule that gets violated far too often. Loads must never be suspended over personnel and under no circumstances may anyone ride the hook or load. Directional movement should be made smoothly and deliberately. Avoid rapid movements in any direction. It takes skill and practice to become a safe hoist operator.
workers who may be standing in the direction of travel must be directed to move and remain clear at all times. Immediately stop the lift and move anyone who might have wandered into the direction of travel or under the load. Use the following techniques to help avoid swinging loads during the lift. Locate the hoist directly above the lifting point of the load before lifting. Test operate the hoist several feet in each direction that it travels. Listen for any unusual noises. Look for any jerky movements. When lifting loads at or near capacity, test the hoist brake system by returning the master switch or push button to the off position after raising the load a few inches off the floor. If the brakes do not hold, lower the load to the floor slowly and do not continue to operate the hoist. Report the situation immediately Lock out and tag the hoist and do not use until repaired. Lower loads directly below the hoist. Keep hoisting cables and chains vertical. Maintain a minimum of two full wraps of cable on the hoisting drum for stability. Ensure that all loads are lifted high enough to clear obstructions before moving the bridge or trolley. Whenever possible, maintain a minimum clearance of one foot above loads and to the sides. Raise the load only to the height necessary to clear lower objects and never pull a hoist by the pendant cable. Never leave the controls unattended while a load is suspended. If it becomes necessary to leave the controls, lower the load to the floor. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the location of the disconnect switch in the event of an emergency. Be sure it is readily accessible and not blocked, maintaining a clear path to the switch in the event of an emergency. If loss of electrical power occurs, place controls in the off position to prevent unexpected startup upon restoration of power. Always disconnect power to a hoist that is unsafe or in need of repair. Arrange to have the disconnect switch locked and the control panel tagged with an out of order or do not operate tag. And always be sure to follow your organization's lockout tagout procedures. Never operate a hoist that has been tagged with an out of order or do not operate tag, or is in your opinion, unsafe to operate. With today's concern for security, be sure to lock out the switch when not in use. This would hinder an intruder from using the equipment to cause damage within the building by trying to dislodge pumps, motors, and other equipment. Other important safety considerations include Making sure all control buttons are clearly labeled to indicate their function. Operate each button to make sure it functions properly, releases immediately, and does not stick. Practice using the controls so that you are thoroughly familiar with their operation. Make sure rope wire is properly seated in its drum and sheave grooves without slack or overlapping. Check all hooks. Hooks should not be cracked, stretched, bent, or twisted. Each hook must have a safety latch that automatically closes the throat of the hook. If the latch is bent, spring is broken, or is otherwise damaged, the latch must be repaired before use. Hooks should rotate freely in block assembly without any grinding felt or herd. Check the wire rope by lowering the block to the lowest level and looking for the following conditions. Look for a reduced or thinning diameter of the wire rope. This may indicate the rope has been stretched, has lost its inner core support, or has worn outside wires. Also, look for any number of broken strands of wires or any that have been kinked, crushed, cut, or birdcaged, or may have heat damage. If any of these conditions are observed, they should be reported immediately. Check load chain for damage, wear at contact points, cracks or distorted, bent, twisted, or stretched links. Inspect all mechanical coupling links to ensure linking pins are secure and in good condition. Report unsafe conditions immediately. As with all equipment, one of the best ways to ensure that the equipment is maintained in a safe operating condition is to develop a hoist safety program. The program must comply with both regulatory and manufacturer's requirements for documentation. Documentation associated with hoist may include, but not be limited to, training and training records, annual, monthly, and quadrennial condition reports, certifications compliant with regulations or other requirements, load testing records, cable and hook inspection documentation, deficiency and recommendation reports, 
maintenance and service evaluation forms and records, operation audit and evaluation reports. Be sure to contact a local vendor that specializes in the type of hoist your organization uses and ask for their assistance in developing a solid hoist safety program. The vendor should be able to provide some excellent services such as training and inspection practices and documentation, how to develop maintenance and repair record-keeping programs, how to incorporate procurement procedures to ensure that you get the right equipment for the job, rigging techniques to verify compliance with industry safety standards, job site hazard analysis as it applies to hoists. We have talked a lot about safety. Now let's spend some time on the working operations and controls of hoists. The hoist control device usually has push buttons that energize an electric motor. The electric motor transmits power through the hoist gearing to the hoist load chain sprocket or hoist drum, thereby lifting or lowering the hoist load hook. Hoist lifting and lowering controls are usually push buttons mounted in a pendant control suspended from the hoist or levers or switches mounted in a remote radio control transmitter. Lifting is accomplished by pushing the lifting control button and conversely, lowering occurs by actuating the lowering button. The controls are likely to be marked lift slash lower, up slash down, raise slash lower, or a combination of markings. The control device used to lift and lower the hoist may also have controls for other functions such as trolley travel, overhead travel, power on, off, and emergency stop. Examples of such control markings may include, but are not limited to, east slash west, right slash left, open slash close, start slash stop, and others. So far, we have discussed a number of important issues associated with safe operation of overhead or pendant hoists. As you can see, there is a lot more to learn than you may have thought. Please take the time to become thoroughly familiar with the safety features and requirements of your specific equipment. This short video presentation cannot adequately address all the training that would be required for working with complicated equipment. Be sure to work with your supervisor to acquire the training needed. Do not forget, your local hoist and crane vendor may be an excellent source for additional hands-on training.